I know it's something that can change your life. Now, um, let me tell you one reason why I know that when I speak, it'll empower and change people's lives because I only speak on what changes my life. So when something changes my life, I simply make a message out of it and present it to other people because if God gave something to me that's empowered my life, uh, then surely, my friend, it will empower the lives of those who take time to listen to those who take time. And so thank you again for your attention. Uh, So in the U.K., I was speaking at a conference. Uh, Les Brown and I were speaking together. Now, usually I would speak first and then Les would speak afterwards. But this occasion, they had him speak first and then I, I followed up. And as always, Les was just absolutely phenomenal. And he spoke along the theme of don't allow other people's negative opinion of you to become your reality. Now, if you don't know Les's story, in a nutshell, twins, he and his uh, brother, his brother, so twins were born and, and abandoned by their mother in an abandoned uh, um, building. And so eventually they were adopted and so forth. And, and they always called Les the slow twin. And uh, he was labeled mentally retarded, educated educably slow and so forth, and he bought into that until one day mentor a coach uh, who helped him to break out of that, and now uh, he's a powerful example and speaks on that. And so, again, he said, don't allow other people's negative opinion of you to become your reality. It was so powerful. So afterwards, I, you know, we were talking a little bit before I spoke, and I said, Les, that, man, that – that's off the hook. That message has to get around the world. That's powerful. That's like, that's life transformation. Well, I, 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 I got one, I got I got one, one little thing. thing. Uh, um, hold on a second. I said, I got one little thing that I think can help take it even further. And he's like, come on, doc, what you got? <laughs> I said, okay. I said, how about this? How about only allow God's opinion of you to become your reality. It's like, oh, Doc, I think you got me. I, I like that one. I like that one. So, so with that in mind, I, I, I got to think of the pond, and the Lord ministered to me. On, so I'm going to give you um, what I believe could re- revolutionize your life. Now, some of you, um, again, different people, different personalities, um, take a little more into consideration, but every single human being will be affected by this. And so here's the title of the topic. You want to write it down. I'll just go through talking, expounding. So here's, here's, here's the thought. Stop allowing your own or others' negative opinion concerning you, your business, your past, or what you desire to accomplish to become your reality. Instead, only allow God's truth to become your reality. Let me say it again. You want to write this down unless, of course, you're driving, right? But stop allowing, uh, if you can envision a stop sign, right? I'm putting up a stop sign. Stop allowing your own or others' negative opinion concerning you, your business, your past, or what you desire to accomplish to become your reality. Instead, only, I'm emphasizing, only allow God's truth to become your reality. One more time for you slow writers, okay? Stop allowing your own or others' negative opinions concerning you, your business, your past, or what you desire to accomplish to become your reality. Instead, allow only God's truth to become your reality. Romans 3, uh, verse 3 and verse 4, but just verse 4 for right now. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Mm. So, so think about that for a minute. So stop allowing, first of all, your own. See, 83% of self-talk is negative, which means, get this now, I was my worst enemy growing up. I never believed in me. I never... And, again, a lot of that is, uh, is, again, if you come up in a great environment, an empowering environment, you know, like, like Jonathan constantly, I'm calling him, I don't even barely call him Jonathan, I call him champion all the time. Hey, champ, right? 
and embracing and, and, and complimenting him and giving him um, praise for not just things that he does right, but things that he attempts. So, so he, he's got an environment of, of love, an environment of praise, an environment of, 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 of good examples in front of him and so forth. So, so someone like that has a lot better chance of coming up with the right type of mentality. But most of us, most of our belief system was developed by the time we're 16, which means most of what we believe we don't believe is what we picked up based on the environment that we came up in. And if we came up in a good empowerment, empowering environment, okay, well, we've got an extra incentive, right? If not, then we're thinking thoughts that really were impressed upon us. We're thinking based on what we felt and so forth and uh, what we experienced and that might not be good. But, hold, but, but wait a minute now, wait a minute now. So in the early days, it was not your fault. But now that you're an adult, now you're an adult. Now, my friend, you have to take personal responsibility. And as you heard me say, the word responsibility means respond with ability. And so, my friend, let me just tell you this briefly. So, so B.F. Skinner, uh, many years ago, he was partly right uh, when he said that you, you are a product of your environment. He was partly right. Now, 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 I like to say you're only a product of the inside, not outside environment. That's the difference. See, he was trying to say, based on your environment, so, 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 so you, you come up in a bad environment, you'll be bad. A good environment, you'll be good. Well, that's not true. We have people that come up in great environments like Adam and Eve, a perfect environment, and they mess the whole thing up, <laughs> right? You got folks who grow up in Christian home with Christian example, Christian love, Christian everything, and still they go running out, my friend. I'm saying, listen, my friend, you're not a product of your environment so much. You're a product of the inside environment. In other words, the environment of your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Romans 12, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so, my friend, if there's no enemy within, the African proverb says, the enemy without can do you no harm. So, again, stop allowing your own. See, I'm stopping there first because that's where the problem lies. See, most of us, my friend, are our own worst enemy. And if someone else would talk about you the way you think and talk about yourself, you wouldn't hang around them much. Hello, somebody. I said if most of the people would criticize you the way you criticize yourself, if most of the people would come down on you the way you come down on yourself, my friend, you wouldn't think highly of them. You wouldn't be around them. And yet, my friend, somehow we've learned, we've, grow, we've grown up doing that to ourselves. And it's so bad that when someone gives us a compliment, we reject it. And when someone gives us uh, criticism, we readily accept it. Mm. And sometimes it's under the guise of being a quote-unquote humble Christian, uh, you know, the humility thing is really just making sure you're giving credit to where credit is due, and that's almighty God. But, but watch this, my friend. Humility is submitting yourself under the mighty hand and mighty arm of God. But, but watch this, my friend. And, and by the way, I always say, you know, the beginning of greatness is to be little. The increase of greatness is to be less. The perfection of greatness is to be nothing, and oh, to be nothing that he might be everything in me. But, once, but when I become nothing, so he becomes everything in me, listen, my friend, now we are co-laborers. We get to work together because he said, I don't want you feeling like you're nothing and nobody. I want you to understand with me and in me, as the scripture says, without, you know, uh, the song or whatever scripture, without me, you can do nothing. Well, guess what? That means with him, you can do everything. Watch this now. So, so watch this as I was sharing with my son the other day, um, with the thing about confidence and so forth. Proverbs three twenty six: The Lord shall be thy confidence. So, so you can have great confidence. You, you, you can have great assurance. But get this, my friend. Every last one of you on this line, examine yourself. How are you speaking to yourself? How are you thinking about yourself? And do you have negative opinions about yourself, about your ability to build a business? If you see, some, that's why some people say, well, what if it doesn't work? See, that's your own negative opinion that you keep getting out there, my friend. And so you've got to learn to block that. You've got to learn to stop that. So again, stop allowing your own negative opinion because most of the time it's with you. And I'm telling you, my friend, most of my life, I didn't think I could do anything, but other people who I respected, they believed in me. They thought I could do something. And so I wouldn't attempt it because I thought I could do it. I only attempted it because they thought I could do it, and I didn't want to let them down, and it shocked me when it worked. <laughs> and then one day I got to the place, I said, man, if, why don't I just go ahead and believe in myself or believe in the God in me? By the way, write this down. This is my, my, one of my themes for this year. It's time for God to shine in you. <laughs> now, I'm, of course, I said it's time for God to shine through me, 
and you too if you want him to, but, 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 but it's God's time to shine through me. You need to say that to yourself day in and day out, my friend. It's God's time to shine. And listen, my friend, when you allow God to shine through you, watch this, it's going to be a difference. But you've got to stop, get this now, stop allowing your own negative opinion. See, you have a negative opinion about yourself. You have a negative opinion about your past. You've got a negative opinion about your business. You have a negative opinion about what you desire to accomplish, and that's why it's not happening, my friend. So you've got to have a breakthrough. You've got to have a switch, and you've got to learn, my friend, you've got to learn that only God's truth. That's why you've got to spend time in this word, my friend. You've got to meditate so that God's truth becomes your reality. So, again, stop allowing your own, and then, again, or others negative opinion. So that's kicking to another gear here. So sometimes it's other people's negative opinion. I love what Booker T. Washington said, by the way, everything I began to do in life, I began with the ideal I can and will succeed. Man, I wish everybody. I said, he said, everything in life that I began to do, I began with the ideal I can and will succeed. You see, my friend, if you could think that way about yourself, everything would change. See, you're looking for somebody outside of you to help and empower you. No, no. In, see, I don't help people anymore. I only empower people. See, it's like somebody drowning, right? And uh, you jump in and try to save them, and they, they don't mean to, but they're trying to pull you down, right? So now what I tell people, instead of helping them by jumping in, I empower them by throwing in a life preserver. And uh, so you grab on, and I'll pull you out of not the eulogy they ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm laughing, but I'm really serious about that, my friend. Empower means I help you to understand you got power inside you that's untapped. you got potential inside of you, my friend, that, that you haven't understood and realized. And now I'm teaching you some things, and I'm being an example to help you to, to, to ignite what's on the inside of you. Because everything you need, God already knew you was going to come up against it. So he put it deep on the inside of you. But sometimes, like Adam, my friend, it's so deep. He's got to he got to put you to sleep and do some surgery because it's going to be so much pain to bring it out. And God, like in Adam's case, reached down inside of Adam and pulled out of Adam what was in Adam that Adam didn't even know was there. The help Adam needed, Eve, was already inside of him, but he just didn't know. And everything you need, my friend, but I'm telling you, it's a process and it's a painful process. But my friend, you've got to you've got to learn to stop negating the process by what you're negative. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, so you got to learn to stop causing death or stop allowing other people to cause death by the negative things that they say. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, you heard of her, right? And uh, she was told she'd never make it on television. She was told she never. And if you knew her real background, my friend, I don't have time to go through it right now. But incredible, incredible situation. But guess what, my friend, now she's one of the most powerful women in the world, my friend. And I'm telling you, not only made it great in television, owns her own network. <laughs> Are you hearing me, my friend? What, what did Oprah do? Oprah didn't know. She stopped allowing her own or others' negative opinion concerning her or her business or her past or what she desired to accomplish to become her reality. Now, whether she knows it or not, she only allowed, she allowed God's truth to become her reality. See, the strain falls on the just and the unjust. Hey, what about Kobe Bryant? And again, I hope you're praying for his family and the other families in this terrible situation. But Kobe Bryant, I saw a little interview of him, and he said this. He said, I had a guidance counselor when I was a little kid that told me to give up basketball. <laughs> Can you imagine that? One of the greatest players, some people's opinion, the greatest one, but one of the greatest players ever so far to go down in history. But he was told, see, if he'd allowed, get this now, this counselor, this guidance counselor's negative opinion of him to become his reality, many people would have missed out. He would have missed out. And I'm saying some of you, the same thing is happening. So it's time to stop. Wilma Rudolph. Oh, my goodness. One, the 20... 20th of 22 children <laughs> born in Tennessee. And at age four, she contracted polio. And the doctor said she would never walk again. The doctors, the quote-unquote experts said she would never walk again. But guess what? Wilma had a mom that believed in her. And Wilma's belief in her. By the way, if your belief in yourself is low, if your self-confidence is low and shot and gone, guess what? Listen carefully then you can believe in your mentor's belief in you. Come on, somebody. Then you can believe in your God's belief 
in you. So so here's what we're often so so she goes to get some physical therapy and so forth, and eventually they, they they construct these bracelets, and she's able to barely walk with these bracelets and and, and braces and so forth. Excuse me, braces, but but you know leg braces. But you know what? She wasn't satisfied. In her mind, she imagined, by the way, Einstein said education will get you from point A to point B. Imagination will get you everywhere else. She imagined running. She imagined uh, being a top-class, world-class runner. That's right. You say, how does somebody, because, my friend, listen, listen, nobody can hinder your imagination except you. And so guess what? She imagined it. And then she started applying herself. And eventually, she was able to walk without her braces. And then she was able to run. And then she ran faster. And by the age of 16, she was in the junior, the Olympics, rather. She got a bronze medal. Four years later, she came back at age 20 and won three gold medals, the first woman in history to ever do that. And she was deemed the fastest woman in the world. Wait a minute. How could somebody, my friend, like that, how could somebody do that? I'll tell you why. Because she stopped. Listen carefully. She stopped allowing her own or others' negative opinion concerning her to become her reality, but instead she allowed God's truth to become her reality. Romans 3, 4, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. You see, my friend, history is full of st- situations like this. What about Steve Harvey? What about Steve Harvey as a little boy when they were told to tell us what you'd like to be in life? And all the kids were reading their paper, what they wanted to be. And when Steve Harvey got up back then, he had a bad stuttering problem. And he was stuttering. He said, I, 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 I want, want, want to be on TV. And uh, the teacher literally, and why a teacher would do this, especially in front of uh, others, and said, now, Steve, you can't even barely talk. Who would, why in the world would you think you're going to be on television? You need to change. Think about something else. And guess what? Steve Harvey, my friend, you know the story now, and uh, everyone on television. And so guess what he said? Every year he sends that woman a huge big screen TV so she won't miss him on TV. See, what's the difference between Steve Harvey and you? The only difference is he stopped allowing his own or others' negative opinion concerning him to become his reality. But instead, he allowed God's truth to become his reality. Tyler Perry, we could say the same thing, who, again, my friend, living, living out of his car, homeless for a while, selling his little CDs out of his car. He had a dream. He had a goal. And listen, people laughed in the scorn. But guess what, my friend? He started all of a sudden taking his uh, Medea, his little play all across the world. And and make a long story short, my friend, now he's able to he was able to build. And they like, said, it'll never happen. It never, never happened, Tyler. And he was able to build. They said, Tyler, because you had some success, don't go overboard thinking, no, no, no. He was able to build, and now he's got the largest studio in the world. But guess what? Owned by him, and instead of taking deals from somebody else, he created his own deal. And I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, my friend, what was the difference? The only difference between you, the only difference between you and Tyler Perry is he stopped allowing his own or others' negative opinion concerning him, his business, his past, or what he desired to accomplish to become his reality. Instead, he only allowed God's truth to become his reality. Uh, you know, I tell you all the time about Myron Golden, the first guy ever led to Christ 40, oh my goodness, 42 years ago. And uh, and uh, things weren't clicking for Myron. Had, he had polio as a child, and, and uh, but Myron had a strong belief and determination. But, you know, our Christian school, um, when he graduated, he got the award most likely to get on your nerves. And, uh, you know, f- flunked out of college. I was just, I was a professor at the time. I was, uh, he was one of the students there. And and uh, flunked out of co- college and dropped out. But guess what, my friend? Went on to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. As a matter of fact, I was uh, uh, at an event not long ago where he spoke for 45 minutes or less and made $3.8 million. Come on, somebody. Now, this year already, he's already made over a million dollars so far for this, you know, this month. Uh, or what, Excuse me, last month. And uh, going doing it again this month. But, but what I'm saying is this. What's the difference between Myron Golden and you? The difference is, he stopped allowing his own or others' negative opinion concerning him, his business, or his past, uh, of what he wanted to accomplish to become his reality, but he started allowing God's truth to become his reality. As a matter of fact, my friend, I'm going to tell you, uh, many family members said, Myron, just g- give this thing up. I-, I remember 
bless his heart, he was in home-based business over a year and a half, almost not one single sale. But guess what? Nobody bought his property, kept on and kept on and kept on and kept on, and now he's considered one of the greatest salesmen in the world. Why? Because he didn't allow his own or others' negative opinion to become his reality. I think about myself when I started martial arts uh, over 50 years ago now, and they called me Mr. Baboon. They laughed at me. I used to trip over my own feet. And I said, y'all can laugh all y'all want to, but one day I'm going to whoop all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and many of you know my story as a six-year-old boy being jumped and tarred and feathered by a teenage gang and left out in the field literally to die. And so I was greatly motivated, right? I was like, man, I'm not going to, I'm going to learn how to protect myself. So I was greatly motivated this, with this martial arts. And they laughed at me, but guess what, my friend, 38 years later, my friend, um, after working out many times, four and five hours a day, but 38 years later, Nobody was laughing, my friend, when I was inducted into the Black Belt Hall of Fame. Nobody was laughing when I retired t uh, 15 years ago now as the heavyweight champion with Karate World Rating System. Nobody's laughing now when I'm one of 100 tenth degree black belts in the world. I'm saying, my friend, you've got to stop allowing your own or others' negative opinion concerning you, your business, your past, or what you desire to accomplish to become your reality only. Only, I beg you, only allow God's truth to become your reality. Romans 3, 4, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Even you, my friend, by the way, 1 John 3, 20, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. See, see, my past, I don't need to know your past. You don't know your future. That's your problem. See, here's the thing. Your past is just that. See, the past does not dictate the future like my mentor Bill Bailey taught me, who had a company grossing $64 million a month, and his story is incredible too, but but watch this, my friend, $64 million a month back in the days, no email, no fax machine, no nothing uh, in the early 70s. And, uh, but anyway, uh, he, he said, your past does not dictate the future unless you allow it. I said, ooh, say that again. I'm writing that down. He said, your past does not dictate the future unless you allow it. All of us have things in our past that we wish we could erase. But listen, I found out this. Your past was meant to be a lesson, not a life sentence. Ooh, I said, your past, so I'll just flip it. Your past is not to be a life sentence, but rather a lesson, my friend. And so listen, my friend, there are those that would try to say, Moses, you murdered somebody. Who, how do you think you're going to be used of God? Okay, Moses, you can listen to them or you can listen to God. Come on, somebody. I'm saying, listen, I'm telling you, my friend, it's literally, I know I'm, it sounds like I'm oversimplifying it, but I'm telling you, my friend, I, I think I put my finger on the thing that could change your life forever, but empower you also to change others' lives. And that is, my friend, all through the Bible. Gideon, Gideon, he's thinking he's a coward. He's thinking he's a nobody, but God appears to him and says, no, a mighty man of valor. What, what if Noah would have listened to what the folks laughing at him, 120 years of building, and they said, where's this rain at, Noah? What, what if Jabez, Jabez, his mom had him called him Jabez because he was a child of her sorrow. I mean, what? No, no, no. Jabez went beyond that in First Chronicles 4, 10. And Jabez, and here's the difference between Jabez and some other folks, Jabez began to call upon the God of Israel. <laughs> See, he didn't, he didn't stay in this pity party. He started praying, my friend. And he said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and that thou wouldest enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me, and God granted him his request. What about David, his brothers telling him, boy, who, where are you out here for? Go on back. If David would allow his brother's opinion of him to become his reality, Israel would have, been not, would have not been delivered then, my friend, or God would have had to raise somebody else up. But guess what? David said, y'all might not recognize who I am. You might not know, but I know who I am based on who the God in me called me to be. And as a matter of fact, I like what David did. He rehearsed a little bit just to make sure. He said, now, there was a lion that came after me, and I destroyed that by the power of God and the bear. So I don't know who you think you are, big old bully Goliath. And some of you, that's what you got to do. You got to pull out. Listen, he's done things for you in the past. He's, he's given you breakthroughs in the past. Come on, somebody. There was times you didn't think you could do things, and you end up doing them in the past. There was time. So I'm saying, my friend, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So a double-minded man is unstable, but gets a decided and decisive man. And when I say man, when God made man, he made Adam and Eve. He called their name. He called him man. 
it was Adam that called her name Eve later. So when I say man and God says man, he's talking about mankind. But watch this, my friend. But I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, you've got to understand you have the power of a free will. And so you can stop, you can rearrange the thoughts in your mind. That's why I put together my 21-day breakthrough challenge. That's why I developed the 10-day advance challenge. That's why I put out my book, Your Breakthrough is Guaranteed, and, and How to Build a Big King Fast, things like that. Why? So it can help empower you, my friend, to stop allowing your own or others' negative opinion concerning you, your business, your past, or what you desire to accomplish to become your reality, but rather only allow God's truth to become your reality. If Nehemiah would have listened to them, there never would have been a wall. If Paul would have listened, listen, can you imagine? He's like, no, 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 man. You were Saul. You was the one, you, you was the one standing there when it killed um, Stephen, and, and now you come up here acting like you done got saved or something. Man, uh-uh. If he would have, listen, if he would have done like most of us do, he would have stayed Saul, literally. But it becomes Paul. It becomes mightily used of God. Why? Because he doesn't allow others' negative opinion concerning his past, come on, somebody, or concerning him. I, we could go all through the Bible, the woman at the well. I mean, listen, John Mark, who gave up and finally, matter of fact, Barnabas and Paul fought off. <laughs> he's like, well, I would have taken, Paul's like, no, nah, man, he's a little, he's a little time for that. And uh, Paul and Barnabas had to, the, I mean, they had to break up because Paul's like, I ain't doing that. But later on in life, but later on in life, Paul says John Mark was profitable. But if John Mark would have allowed his past, if John Mark would have allowed Paul's negative opinion of him to become his reality. See, some of us, we're on guard when wicked people have a negative opinion of, about us. But what about when godly people have a negative opinion of you? See, the Bible says, blessed is the man, Psalm 1, that walketh not in the counts of the ungodly. Now, for many years, that had me stooped because I thought that meant I thought that meant you don't walk in the counsel of ungodly people. No, what it really means is you don't walk in the counsel of anything that's ungodly. So what happened was I stayed away from the ungodly counsel from ungodly people, but godly people who didn't quite see it, who had blind spots, and, and I listened to their ungodly counsel and got messed up in some areas, my friend, and had to get breakthroughs. I'm telling you, my friend, no, ungodly counsel is ungodly counsel. I don't care if it comes from godly or godless people, <laughs> right? But I'm saying this, my friend, all through your life, and sometimes the thing that will hit you the hardest is the people that you're closest to. Sometimes the things that will hit you the hardest are the people, my friend, that seem to, to, to be like a straight arrow and be living right and doing the right things and got the power of God upon their life. But I'm telling you, my friend, just like Paul, you can speak against John Mark all you want to. John Mark is up to you now. If you're going to allow Paul's opinion of you, this great man of God, to become your reality, or if you're going to allow God's opinion of you, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And even Jesus himself, my friend, they mocked him. They said, he's a public, friend of publicans. And if now, what if Jesus would have been like us? And what if Jesus would have allowed other people's negative opinion of him to become his reality? You wouldn't have salvation today, my friend. But the Pharisees, they found fault in him. There wasn't any fault in him, but they projected their own fault. But if they, when people blame you, and sometimes I've been there, they blame you for something long enough. You're like, man, if I'm getting blamed for this, I'm going to go and get into it. No, no, no. And even on the cross, I got ready to get ready to stop here. I'm going to stop here another minute. But the two thieves on the cross, one said... One allowed uh, his own negative opinion to keep him back. The other said, wait a minute now, if you're the son of God, remember me. <laughs> and Jesus says, this day, this day. There's only two different, there's only one difference between those two thieves. One thief allowed his or the opinion of others to stop him or to become his reality. The other thief allowed God's truth to become his reality reality. And Jesus said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. A thief getting to paradise <laughs> because the Savior cleaned him up and changed him. And the other thief could have had the same thing, but he himself stopped himself. Why? Because he listened to maybe his own or others' negative opinion to become his reality. My friend, I'm telling you, I am telling you, I'm telling you, my friend, if we could burn this into our own hearts, if we could burn this into our children's hearts, if you can burn this into your team members, you'd have everybody on your team breaking records, my friend. I'm telling you why. Because 
God calls you more than an overcomer. That doesn't mean bad things won't come up against you. That just means everything that comes against you, you overcome it. He didn't call me a champion. He didn't call you a champion. He said you're more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody. So I close with this. Stop allowing your own or others' negative opinion concerning you, your business, your past, or what you desire to accomplish to become your reality. Instead, only, I said only, allow God's truth to become your reality. God bless you. It's breakthrough time.